today is the last lecture of uh, this class. In this semester, um, I'm going to make tonight's class shorter so that, no, you don't go home early, but you need to do a group project, right? I want you to, I'm going to give it to you the rest of uh, tonight's uh, class so that you can work together, uh, make some progress. Next week, it's your, your, your exam, one-time exam. So you need to plan to come Blackboard Wednesday evening, Thursday evening, or Friday evening. One of those are three evening, right? Starts from seven, seven to nine, uh, seven to ten. All right, so plan for that. If you miss, then technically, if you plan, you have to, you should let me know early, but I haven't heard any so far. So I presume you all will make. Uh, we're talking about the exam oh. next week. And then the last week of this semester, which is, 20, 21st, 21st, right? Um, so we'll meet again, again here for your uh, group project presentation. On that night, by that night, you have to submit a group project report. As I said, each individual team member should submit in that way I do not miss your grading. Otherwise, I have to uh, walk through all possible. I need to look up someone else and find out who is his uh, teammates and go there and enter a number manually and come back. Uh, so there is always a, a potential mistake. Uh, that mistake. So the bottom line is this, submit, okay? Each individual. Chris, do you have a question? Yeah, so it's a report in addition to the PowerPoint presentation? PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentation, right, in addition to that. Power, PowerPoint presentation, if you do here on that night, mm -hmm. then you may or may not, because I see yours, but if you do that, uh, online, for example, uh, your team members uh, make presentation and record it and post it some uh, multimedia server, for example, youtube.com and an URL uh, to be submitted so that if URL uh, reaches uh, your uh, video presentation properly, then I can grade it in such case. I need to read it. I need to read your PowerPoint presentation slide because I do not see yours clearly. I cannot make any uh, questions or things. Okay. Again, um, so next week we do not have class. We do not have a physical meeting here, but two weeks from tonight. We will meet again here. You should be here by yeah, or six uh, fifteen. Uh, the teams who wants to make presentation. If you do not come, then at least you have to. Your team should be here before uh, the pre presentation uh, is over. If it is over, over. I'm not going to wait here until nine o'clock. And also, if you make your presentation, if you do not have any uh, uh, specific question to other presentation, then you may leave as well. Okay. Any question? No question? Uh, 
Another thing is uh, those who do not have uh, programming skills yet, but do not take uh, 505, do not have a clear understanding of uh, computer science technologies, please register the course that we offer, 505, which sometimes I do, yeah, every semester I uh, cover a little different uh, depending upon the group of students, right? Um, so there you can learn Python programming. Of course, uh, graphical user interface is uh, it's the thing that uh, we practice. But the exercise is covered in class. It's not enough. Uh, if you want to build the skill sets of coding, then you have to practice very much. And if you want uh, more uh, questions to practice, then I can I can give you uh, tons of uh, exercises available. But many times I uh, I control the speed from time to time. And another thing, um, we didn't do much here. Yeah, before I forget, uh, those who are interested in, therefore, continue to work uh, to make the system intelligent. We did one time. What is the technologies? What is uh, Java pro? Um, no, Java. Python program that we did in class? Neural network, neural network. So those who wants to do uh, continually to do neural work, neural network to develop and study further, uh, then you can. I mean, contact me. Okay, so. Johnny, for example, uh, yeah, he was the uh, first one who wants to do some voluntarily help our October event. So definitely, definitely, if you, I'm thinking from you, I need to give some reward to him. For example, right, as I said, uh, we want to make some team spirit within uh, our major, okay? So that uh, each semester we have different types, different types of student body. Student body. Some semester students get along together very tightly, and they work together. Only bad thing is that they work together uh, for exam, which is bad. But Chris, you know, right? You were uh, the time that I am talking about uh, such a uh, group of students uh, who work closely together. They uh, hang out together. You know them, right? Yeah. Mr. When, when was it? I think uh, a couple of semesters ago, right? Uh, probably yeah. when I started. Oh, when you started, yeah. yeah all, all good. Uh, another good thing is that, yeah, when, when you started, do you uh, know uh, Dennis uh, Macaro? Dennis, Dennis Macaro? Yes. Yeah, we still talk. Yeah, she was um, working for the hospital and, and quit. You know what she did? Oh, this is recorded. 
<laughs> she comes. She comes. <laughs> my class too. She she's subscribing. Uh, my class. So my my class is, is in uh, YouTube. So so what I want to about her is that she she's smart. So one of the uh, brightest students, uh, energetic. Um, anyone you knowing what she is doing right now? I mean, I need to go to her. When? Uh, Recent? About a month ago. A month ago? Yeah. yeah. She found uh, some publication companies. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Yeah. I have first edition in my office. Oh, really? First edition. Well, I'm going to bring it yep. so that I can pass you around. Yeah, she asked me to write, actually. <laughs> so this, this is a magazine. So start from China. So you yes. it's not the political magazine. It's a technical magazine. Okay. So, if you are interested in, I think uh, you better, if you want, I can uh, introduce you guys to that publication. So, you, so I want you to write something uh, from the work that you are interested in or from the field that you have experienced uh, to that magazine, right? which is not bad. So Chris, you can write something about your hospital network. Uh, I know some of you are working for a school network, right, Evan? What? You're working for a school network, right? Yeah. yeah, so something about that. And I know many of you, some experience. Uh, many, uh, <coughs> David, you also yeah. school. No, uh, Oh, it's a government? Yeah, not, uh, not, not particularly school, but entire? No, it's just, no, it's just the county itself. County yeah, itself. If that's, if that's where we're going, well, I'm, I'm not a school, I'm a district, and it's 19. You're the district, yeah. It's a little bigger than... So still, still in education, you are the government. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you have your own specialty, your own domain, so that uh, you have a lot things to share with uh, outside the world. Uh, so we, we need to support her. So she's, if you look at uh, the members of that uh, edition, she's the only one. Editor, chief in editor and everything. Treasurer or secretary. So you can take <laughs> one of the positions. Okay. And we will uh, put some of our student uh, cyber skill competition there as well. All right, that, that is that's very good. Um, I s replied back to her, but she must be busy. Haven't heard yet. Chris, when you have a chance, tell her to call me. <laughs> okay. Uh, K nearest neighbor, uh, we, 
I practiced the classification last week, right? Um, oh, no, 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 not, not classification. Dynamic time warping. Yeah, that's what we uh, did last time. Uh, today, two, two things. Well, they are slightly related, but uh, if you speak uh, uh, from a micro uh, scope, then they are not really the same because uh, K nearest neighbor algorithm is, the, is, is one, one of uh, popular one of the popular algorithms uh, for clustering uh, that we learn here. <coughs> but that can be used for classification as well. <coughs> clustering is, is uh, classification and clustering uh, both uh, leads to uh, the similar outcome, but they, they use different approaches. Classification algorithms usually do not have, uh, do have teacher, right, supervisor. So supervisor provides some to uh, classification algorithm. On the other hand, the clustering, uh, there is no uh, supervisor, so you your program, your uh, algorithm should start uh, from scratch, and and of course there are uh, a lot of uh, 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 specific algorithms developed. Uh, we do not cover here, but I can give you uh, some idea. For example, so bottom-up approach and uh, and top-down approach, both approaches. Uh, exist. For each approach, there are, are uh, multiple, hundreds of different algorithms uh, have been developed so far. Uh, top down is this. If you have uh, big data sets, then initially you consider them in one cluster. Top down approach uses partitioning algorithms. So you partition. Partition into two parts, and to see if it meets uh, some requirements that you want to have. For example, how close they should be in. How close can be determined by distance function, right? Yeah, we looked at the distance function uh, pretty much uh, last uh, class. One of the distance function that we can do for time series data is uh, dynamic time warping. Simple distance function is Euclidean distance function. More simple but sometimes realistic distance function is Manhattan distance function. Those are, are available in Python. That's what we did the last time. If you do not know yet precisely, uh, you need to review uh, the video lecture that I posted. Okay? There is a top down clustering. You decompose, 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 decompose until Either you have a good size of a cluster, or either you have a, a reasonable level of coherence among uh, the data sets within a cluster. Right? Can be done uh, systematically. On the other hand, the bottom of approach. Initially, you can say each individual data item can be a cluster. Each item. 
If you want, I can, I can do something here. Oh yeah, here. So top down. Approach is this. Initially, everything is uh, is one cluster. And then at some point, you divided it. You divide the, uh, it to two. And then later you divide it to four, a little further, further, further divide. Right? If this region is, is a good size, then you don't need to divide. Right? If any other here that is so big inside, then you can divide further, divide further, further, and you divide this, and further down here, and more, and more, and more, and more. So each one will be a reasonable cluster. And all inside uh, are somehow coherent, they're close enough. So every time when we measure the close, uh, the level of the closeness, then you need to use a distance function. This top-down approach uh, has been used uh, uh, in Google Map, right? That sounds familiar, right? Google Map. When you open up your smartphone or your uh, laptop terminal, then uh, you can see uh, Google Map. You can uh, zoom in, you can zoom out. Uh, for each different granularity, you can see uh, the reasonable size of uh, the, the map in that region, right? So all of those are already populated in the Google Map database and provide it to you. Okay, there's top-down clustering. Bottom-up. Initially, all will be each one of these will be a cluster, right? So then you can say, oh, this is one cluster. This is another cluster. Can we join them? Three of these. Still, all the conditions after joining meet the requirements, the restriction, then you can join them, right? You can even further uh, expand. And at the same time, some other can be grouped together. And then grouping, grouping, so that you have a bigger and bigger cluster. But there is always at some points that you need to stop so that you do not violate any minimum requirements or restriction. Okay, K nearest neighbor algorithm is similar to bottom up approach. Okay, so all instances correspond to points in an n dimensional Euclidean, Euclidean uh, space. Classification is delayed till a new instance arrives. Classification done by comparing future vector of uh, the different points. Target function may be discrete or real value. Uh, there's some of the features. So idea is this. You have the dots. Dots represent uh, a data, data points or data sets, right? It could be uh, at, uh, any intermediate, oh, I got the uh, response from the publisher. She said, hello, thank you. I would look forward to the opportunity to sit 
and chat or talk on the phone with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. The world is connected. She's not uh, listening my lecture real time. You know that. Okay, this is given at any moment of your uh, clustering process. So it could be each bubble, could be a, a current cluster, or could be a single data item. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really ma matter. But still you can apply the same algorithm. So watch this. So they can be combined. Right? If you cluster, then you can see see that uh, cluster. It has originally this is a dark bubble and all others gray bubble, right? We have a three gray bubble. So, so, so you, this cluster is not the cluster that we looked at the previous. They look. Oh, they are. They contains uh, all black bubble in that cluster, which is not the case here, right? So somehow we need to measure. We need the metrics that can tell us what oh, this cluster is good, this cluster is bad. If it is good, how how good it is. Things like that, right? So, but anyway, uh, the k-nearest algorithm, k-nearest neighbor algorithm, uh, in mathematics uh, expression, we can say arbitrary, arbitrary instance is represented by that, and Euclidean, Euclidean distance between two instances, uh, there is a square root of the sum of this. So we looked at that, right, last time. So you compare the distance this with the some others. You, you continually do that, right? For all equals uh, one to n, so you have uh, n data points. So you continually to do that and and find out uh, all the distance, uh, possible dis distance between data elements within a cluster, so that you can see how close they are among themselves. So implementation of uh, uh, k nearest neighbor algorithm uh, has been developed by many projects. One of the uh, solid projects that I want to discuss with you is uh, SK Learn package. SK Learn. Learn, like learning, learning algorithm. SK stands for scientific kit. SK, S comes from scientific, SCI, and kit. So scikitlearn.org, where we have uh, SK learn packages. So you uh, you need to download it, but 
I think probably uh, Paizo that you have do not have that uh, uh, package yet. Then you can download it, right? How can you download and install in Paizo? Very simple, right? PIP, install, SK loan, then you can do that. So I wanted to visit this web page and learn something about the packages. Now, okay, so I'm going to also show Okay, so that is this. Version learning in Python, SSCI kit, scientific uh, kit to learn. So I want to visit as much as you can. I'm, I'm not going to give you all enough time, but <coughs> at least to, we need to click some of these to see if there is any interesting to you and share with others. At a glance, you can see classification, regression, clustering, Dimensionality reduction, model selection, pre-processing. Some of you wants to do pre-processing. Which team wants to do pre-processing? Some of you, your team, right? Last time, your team will do uh, some of the uh, pre-processing. You may use some of these uh, Python packages. Most of the work already done by these packages. So what you need to do is to use it and a little bit of a massage and then interpretation. Dimensionality reduction, that is also uh, one of the uh, critical issue in uh, data mining. Why? If you wants to deal with uh, uh, many dimensionalities uh, of your data sets. Dimensionality means uh, for your uh, simple understanding, uh, consider a table so that you have columns and rows. Rows, you could have uh, half a million data sets or 5,000 data sets. Uh, if you collect it from network, then million data sets uh, can be quickly possible. So it's not a big deal. But the columns, columns are uh, always limited, although sometimes not always the same uh, columns. If, it, if, it, if your data is not really uh, structured, then the number of columns and, and, the, and the types of columns uh, 
may not be the same. So each a row, each table row, you may have different uh, uh, columns. But anyhow, if you consider a table, the dimensionality is nothing but a column. So dimensionality reduction means if you have so many columns, so that if you want to, for example, uh, apply for association rule mining, guess what? You have to associate one column to another column by considering all the data there. So, if you have uh, so many columns, your algorithm may not be feasible. Okay? Number one. That is, computationally, it is uh, almost impossible. Secondly, interpretation issue. If you have so many columns in one expression, it doesn't mean much. And also, that may not occur significantly frequently. It may occur once a decade maybe. Then that type of data mining is, is not really ideal. Any pattern that you learned from data mining should occur frequently so that you can apply the rule mind more frequently so that you can improve your work. Okay? So dimensionality reduction is an important issue if you want to do it. Classification and clustering, I know you know that, right? Regression, this is a little bit uh, from mathematics. And this is like forecasting. In time series data, they may use regression. Okay. What it does is that uh, given uh, data sets collected for the past time period, you may want to forecast. That is a mathematical notation of uh, regression. Okay, so you may use this. I do not want to do further. So, so visit a few of those and, and see. So choose one of uh, your interests and click and go. Okay. On top, I think there is a home installation and documentation. If you, and also examples. If you look at this is documentation and examples. There's a lot of examples available. Let's see documentation. Quick start tutorials. So you can follow the tutorials to learn more. And API. API is nothing but a uh, library or manual that you want to refer to. So, I'll give you five more minutes. Uh, do you know what?
Do you want to install the Python or do you want to download the API? We'll look at uh, in Python. Yeah, there's, there, there's a code that says pip install minus u sidekick dash mark and it's okay. to get. Good, yeah. Can you, can you speak up a little further so that the false can scan? Pip installation, it's like, it's the first gray box. That copy and paste it in works. Oh, good. Anybody who wants to work with the verb uh, extra, let me know so that. Or you can write some. Any any issue that you know. She didn't ask me to write, so I, I cannot. Uh, I may give some lecture. Right? Deep learning lecture. Too hard. I mean, to arbitrary audience. Okay, so let's move. It's not this. Bring this. All right, this is an example. I want to run this. Those who install uh, sklearn, there's a code from sklearn.matrix. Mat matrix means evaluation, right? So import classification underscore report. Uh, let me explain to you. Um, this is a matrix so that let's assume uh, this is the true classification this is your prediction how close they are okay which means I said uh, the first item is in class 0 Second item is in class 1. Third item is in class 2. Fourth item is in class 2, and class 2, and class 1. So this is a true classification. And for some reason, let's say K nearest neighbor algorithms uh, produce this kind of uh, classification, then how can you evaluate it? So 0, 0, Two two one zero. Although it is in uh, class one, uh, class zero, the first item. Oh yeah, uh, your 
a classification algorithm also said that is in class zero. Let's look at the second data item. It should be in the class one, but your algorithm said class zero, and so on and so forth. And then uh, we say target name, right now class zero, class one, and class uh, two in that order. And then you, you uh, call the function, function classification underscore report, and, and give, them, give, that, give to that function. Uh, uh, it looks like a training and, and test data sets uh, in classification. So first one is a training data sets, which means that there is a true data set. And second one is a test data sets. So there is a prediction. And followed by, if you want to, I, I, I want to use uh, the, uh, the, these labels, class 0, class 1, and class 2, then you can say uh, target names equal target names. Target name, this is, uh, this is my variable. This target name is the arguments expected by this function. So if you want to see that, then uh, that is in this uh, if you visit that or or you can come to this class and and from there you can find out that classification underscore report function uh, that the first arguments of that function as we used is a y true there's a correct target array for training and Y uh, prediction. This is our test and uh, label, target names. Uh, there's a whole bunch of arguments uh, possible, but we use only three of those so that we have this kind of outcome. So I wanted to try and I'm going to, meanwhile, I'm going to bring out given that I what so where is my price believe this is it, right? Okay, so this is it. So if I run it, then I have by that. So I'm going to give you some interpretation. Okay. As you looked at here, uh, we have the three classes, class 0, 1, 2, and then the column that says precision, recall, F1 score, and support. Support you probably still remember, right? Support means number of data items that can be applied to whatever that. For example, that can be applied to class zero. How many data supports that? So, if I bring this bottom here, up here, all right, so as you can see, um,
this is real, true, right? This is real. In real classification, how many in the class zero? How many in class one? How many in uh, class, class zero, one, two? Only one, right? One, there should be only one item, specifically the first item should be in class zero, then, then there is a perfect classification. So there's a support. How many in class zero? One. So we have support one. How many in class, uh, class zero? We have one data item. How many in class one? We have two items. How many in class two? Three items. That is the reality. That is the true. That is uh, the training sets. And then we'll look at the precision and recall F1 score uh, for by comparis comparison of these two. So, let me take a look at, uh, I prepared the It's a result interpretation. Oh, I made that. Okay. So measurement, nothing but uh, matrix. Matrix. If you look at that uh, diagram, diagram says uh, uh, we have data sets. Each circle represents a data item, and they are in one pool. And for some uh, process, we acquire uh, relevant uh, items. We can see for some uh, condition, for some process, we know that uh, left half, that is a relevant element, and then uh, right half, that is a true um, I mean, they're ir irrelevant, right? Um, but that is, that is a full data set. So entire is full data set. My process, process returns some data items within the circle. circle. Okay? For example, if you do select Google search, then Google search, Google search, search engine works entire data sets. Then search engine, when you search, you know something in your mind, right? Something in your mind. So when you look at the result of your search, then you can tell, oh, these data items is, is really what I want. But the Google search or any kind of search engine does not give you uh, everything that you want. It gives you something that you do not want to also, right? That is in here. Within the circle, second half. And also, you can share with you, please. <laughs> And also, we all know the outcome of your search engine does not search something yet. Something I know something exists, but it doesn't give to me like something in outside here. Relevant element. I know there's some relevant elements, but it doesn't. It's not uh, popped up. We call that false negative, right? It is classified neg negative by my engine. At the same time, my search returns something that I do not want. Those are all called false positive. My search engine thinks, oh, this is good to you. But in fact, it is not. So your search engine says, oh, this is a positively good. 
But you can say, no, there is a force positive. So you have a force positive here. So force positive and force negative. Anything that's, that is uh, processed by your engine is called force positive. Anything that is still relevant but not processed, which is outside of this left hand side, which is a force negative. And therefore, something that you expected, that you want, that is also uh, selected, we call that true positive. Right? That's good. If you have ego, true positives, then whatever process that you have, that is a good process. And also, something, out, something outside, this is called true negative. If you have no true negative, then your engine is good. So, if you look at that, then we have, you have four, four different kinds of uh, data sets. With respect to any kind of process, can be classification process, clustering process, or search, or what? So, precision is nothing but this. Look at that, what it is. Can you look at? There is this is precision. This is a recall. So precision is in mathematics here. True positive over whatever processed. That is precision. Recalls true, true positive over all relevant data sets. So what does this mean? Can anyone say what it means? What they are? Precision. But I already said here, precision means are all selected good? Supposedly, your processor, okay, supposedly, uh, your processor, this circle, circle only applied here. Then what is, what is precision? Here, numerator is a circle, denominator is still circle, both are in green, so precision is one, which means perfect precision, 100% precision. Okay? So if you have more, this circle, that circle lean toward relevant areas, more areas in, uh, from the, uh, the relevant area, then higher precision. Do you see that? If this guy moves this, then there is higher precision. On the other hand, recall, are they all selected? All that I am interested in are selected. What I interested in, what I am interested in is this left rectangle. 
left triangle, big rectangle. So in what case recall uh, with perfect? As far as as far as this guy covers there. Oops. And there, entire, then that is uh, perfect recall. Perfect recall, even if, even if I have everything here, let's suppose that this circle is nothing but the entire rectangle. Then what is the recall? Let me ask you again. No one's really listening. Let's say this circle, you know, circle, expanded so that it cover everything here in this data item. So what is the recall? If it covers everything, then what I select here, that is everything green and it has everything green. So everything green, green over everything green means there is a one. So there is a perfect. So what is 100% recall if you uh, make uh, a search engine? Every time whoever asks you, you here is my entire database. <laughs> then there is 100% recall. But there is no search engines that you can see. Search engines always, there is a first page, right? If you have uh, everything on the first page, then there is always a 100% recall. But first page may contain a uh, top 10 list or top 20 list, that's it, right? So if you have top 10, in the top 10 list, if you have everything that you want, then there is a recall. But almost impossible, right? Almost impossible. In your database, billion data, sets, this entire. You have two billion data sets. One billion that is relevant, the other billion irrelevant. To make a 100% record, then one billion data should appear at once. Almost impossible, right? But anyway, that is a recall. Precision is Everything on your first page that contains uh, all relevant, then that is a high precision. Okay, so with that said, back here. This is same as the previous. Okay, back here. What is the precision of a class zero? This is, this is, how many selected? How many, how many, uh, how many class zero selected? I want you to look at this. Okay, class zero means uh, the value zero. How many selected? Three zeros appear here in, in this process, right? In my classification. How many of them are real relevant to, I mean, correct zero? Only one, right? So one over three, therefore you have Point three three. What about class one? How many selected class one? We have one, right? So this is selected. This is selected. How many really relevant? 
class one, class one that you selected, class one that you classified is not, this is a false positive. There is a true positive, but it is not selected. So now, none. So zero over one, therefore we have one, I, I mean zero. What about class two? How many selected? We have two selected. So denomination is two. How many of them are relevant? Two, these two are classified accurately because originally it is two, it is classified as two now. These two, originally it is two now, therefore it is classified as two. So all of them are correctly classified. So numerator is two. So 2 over 2, so 100%. There's precision. Recall? What is a recall? What did I say? Are they all selected? All that you are interested are all those you are interested in selected. Class zero. Uh, class zero. Class zero. Originally, we had, you have only, only one. Are they all selected? Yes. Zero is selected as zero. So 100% recall. It doesn't care false positive. Remember that I said, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> if your search engine gives you always, hey, entire database, whatever you ask, hey, here's your match. Of course, it has what you want, but 9.999% are false positive. So false positive is not care in recall, 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 yeah, recall measure. As far as what it returns contains what I want. What it returns, for example, zero, zero classification. We have a three zero classification. Does it contain what I want? Everything that I want? Of course, we have only one in true training set that is selected. Therefore, we call this one. What about class one? Class one, we have one selected. How many in real? We have two selected. Are they all selected as a class one? None of those. So recall is zero. What about, what about uh, class two? We selected two. Okay. What is the real? Real, there are three elements of class two. Are they all selected? No, only two of those are selected. So two over three, which is 0.67. Okay? Th this is a very, very uh, good example of uh, your uh, exam, right? I can grade it very quickly. You, those who know how to calculate can, cal can, can calculate. It's not really... Uh, Difficult math as far as you understand what it is. I give you one example. Example, right? What is the F one? F one score. F one score is this a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, in real interpretation, you can say are they accurate? which is a measure of test accuracy. Once you have a precision and recall, then uh, F1 score is two times one over, one over precision plus one over recall. So, so this is a, a mathematic uh, and mechanical uh, computation. Once you have this precision and recall, then mathematically you will have uh, 
F1 score, which is that. Okay? Any question? And then um, we have another uh, row. It says average over total. So total should be 3, but average uh, 1.33 over 3. Well, average. Yeah. Add them and divide by 3. Add them, divide by 3. Add them, divide by 3. That's what it is. Okay. So, in real coding, uh, I think I real data somewhere. Okay. <coughs> if you go to www.sci-secure.org and I have 520 what is the name? We have tra training data sets and test data sets so you can download the two data sets training data sets oh it is automatically downloaded so, so what I have. Oh, uh, which data is it? Uh, let me. That's what I'm going to show it to you. What, what is it about? That is it, right? Oh, I don't know what it is. Actually. Is it the data that you have, or is this the one that you downloaded? Or is this no, is I it wrong? I don't know Excel, because that would be like that. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it the one, or? This is a. Uh, yeah, train and, and test. Right. This is similar, but... I'm assuming it's being separated up by the periods in there. Oh, yeah, this is a comma separated value. It's not really Excel uh, worksheets, but... It doesn't really... I do not know what it is, but I downloaded it uh, from somewhere. Um, so the idea is this. As we looked at, one here, this is, this is training and this is uh, a test, okay, 
training and test. And then k-nearest uh, neighbor algorithm. Uh, you have a train and test data sets and you cluster, I mean classify it. Finally, we want to matrix, we want to measure the classification report. Okay, so, so this is a test set and this is a, a prediction and and somewhere here, uh, this is the one that we looked at last time, dynamic uh, time warping. Uh, this is functions that we looked at. So this is what we did last time. Uh, and k-nearest algorithm is uh, it's very similar to, to the other. Uh, we compare given data sets, given data sets i from test, we look at, we have a four, uh, next to the for loop, right? Outer for loop is considered test, and inner for loop, train, and i and j, we compare that and build distance table, and finally, we can tell, are they really a good classification or not? Like this. That is a very s uh, small data set, Y true and Y predict. And this one is real big data. And therefore, you might have this uh, this result. <coughs> okay. It has uh, six classes. <coughs> and we have precision. <coughs> Compared to, this is our uh, previous uh, simple data sets uh, example. One, two, three. And we have precision recall and F1 score. Similarly, that big data sets, we have uh, six classes. <coughs> precision and recall and F1 score and so forth. 50 of those apparently, if you see the data sets, 50 of those uh, fall in uh, class 1, 50 of those fall in class 2 <coughs> and so on and so forth. Total 300 data sets. So I want to take a look. So this is it uh, for the class. This is the end of the, of the slide. Um, so you can practice this, or you can do a group project for the rest of uh, tonight's class. Conquers. I'll show you. Uh,